Thanks for joining me. My name is Elizabeth Alfano. In addition to the Fear No Art Chicago TV show on WTTW, look for two episodes a month on FearNoArtChicago.com and come with me as I go behind the scenes to check out all that's being made and get into the hearts and minds and souls of Chicago's artists. When I think of punk rock, I think of London circa 1976, but of course Chicago has its own longtime rocker. Today I'm in the painting and music studio of punk rocker John Langford. John, thank you for having me here. Hello Elizabeth, how are you? Good, 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 thank you. Now you've been a part of the Mekons, the punk rock band, the Mekons, forever. Well, not forever, since 1977, actually. Oh, nine, so okay, so... The, we were like the second wave of kind of northern arty punk rock that came out and straight after the Sex Pistols and all that. What's amazing is that the Mekons still exist. Uh, I think we're about the only, only band from that time that's existed continuously. And you're touring again, aren't you? Yeah, in May, the wow. Mekons playing in London and in Switzerland, and then we'll be back over here when the new album comes out in October. Wow, that's incredible. I, I wondered, you know, to be a punk rocker, do you have to be angry? <laughs> yeah, really, really <laughs> angry. Well, do you? I think it's more about what, what does punk rock mean. And, uh, for us, punk rock was about there being no rules. It wasn't about following some fashion trend. It was also about politics at the time, right? Uh, it was very political in Leeds when we started. I mean, it was about the kind of street politics, just, you know, rock against racism and fighting fascism, and then that turned into fighting Margaret Thatcher and her policies and the miners' strike, I was people very involved in that. And then the campaign against the death penalty over here when I moved here, which, thanks to Governor Quinn, has gone away. Mm -hmm. So you do feel that there's sort of a purpose to the music, not uh, just sort of banging out to get out I don't out think it energy. has to be like, a sort of, you know, everything has to be a prescription for action. I think mm -hmm. what the Mekons have often done is just described the world we live in and then done, you know, lots of gigs for causes we believed in. It should be a conversation, I guess. It sounds like this is such a fulfilling entity. Then why do you have other bands? You're also part of the Waco Brothers and then your own personal band, Skull Orchard. Um, the the Mekons are geographically challenged. Half the band live yes. in London, yeah, okay. some are in New York, some in LA, some here. Um, when I moved to Chicago, I was very interested in country music. And I listened to your country music radio and found out that it was, wasn't really country music anymore. So me and some friends from the Waco Brothers. Which was just basically an attempt to kind of retool and reprogram that old classic honky tonk music that we love so much. Yes. And then also from being isolated, you know, from the other Mekons, I, I, I actually started writing songs on my, by myself. So. Oh, so you didn't do that previously? No, really, no. Everything was done together. It was all this kind of collective action. Yeah. So much richness in all that you do with music. But you're also a painter, and I, I wonder what painting gives you that music doesn't. Yeah, well, I started as a painter. When the, you know, the Sex Pistols came and played Leeds Polytechnic with The Clash and The Heartbreakers and The Damned, everything changed. Punk rock was actually what, what was happening. When I moved to Chicago, I really fancied going back to painting. And I started making what I would call song paintings, you know, paintings that, that come from the same part of my brain that a song might come from. So for you, they're linked then? Absolutely, yeah. I think it took me a while to realize that. And then once I did, it was like, you know, kicking a wall over and realizing that, you know, a lot of painting can be like a song and there's, you know, if you bend reality a little bit, there's very obvious parallels, you know, there's an abstract quality to it. Most of my most of my paintings, you know, end up with a lot of actual written words in them. It all comes from the same part of my brain when it comes down to it. And really? uh, especially in this room now, because we do a lot of music here, yeah. as, as well as doing the painting here. What have you done here? Is it, this is wood, this is a chunk of wood, it's is a chunk that right? of plywood from the Crafty Beaver. Actually, this is, I start off um, painting it many layers. Uh -huh different colors and different uh, colors of acrylic and oil pastel. And then, then I start working on it with office supplies and inks uh -huh. to get this design. Now this has just had a coating of... Gunk? gunk. <laughs> okay. Gunk. What every artist needs. Or historical snot, I call okay. it. And it's, uh, it's exactly the same that's color. A new one. And I work back into it now with the white. And that's why I say it's a pretty process-based thing. Yes, and your paintings have a very rough quality, so you do you make them very rough. textural. 
if these things look aged and dis distressed, it's because I've physically done that to them uh -huh. as a human being rather than the ravages of time. And I feel that's what happens to, you know, that was my allegory for what happens to musicians when you see a paint, a photograph of an old country and western singer who's been sort of chewed up and spat out by the music business. Of course you have a new book out which is just a fantastic body of work and it's so dense. You have your paintings and you have your CD and then your brother does writing who's very very funny. With the book, the Skull Orchard book, each you know each song has a story. I think I'm definitely self-driven. Like the new book, the Skull Orchard book, I mean I don't know who that's aimed at but I felt like mate, you know that's probably what what would be better rather than thinking about yes. what people want? Right. Yeah. Let's give them something they don't want. Yeah. <laughs> but they're that's the light. message of punk rock. After all these years, is it still sex and drugs and rock and roll, or now is it sort of tea and rock um, and roll? Well, I'd like to say it was, but no. No, so that's a no. no so we've moved on to tea, tea and, and ginger nuts at the moment. <laughs> we've talked about music so much in this interview. I wonder if, after all these years of being in music, you would sing me one of your very favorite songs. Uh, my mate Jim's here, so uh, we'll do something right now for you. Well, at last I knew the truth, but the truth is I didn't really want to. I was famous for my portraits, for the likenesses I drew. I spent some time in Hollywood, I went to see the Queen. I did true, I did false, I did all points in between. There's an artist and a creative spirit around every corner and in a few music studios. Join me on the next FearNoArtChicago.com as we get into the unique and fascinating world of the independent artist. Today, I'm in the painting and music studio of punk rocker John Langford. So you actually have to be closer to me because you're going oh, to be in the interview. Sorry. <laughs> you're actually the reason we we're start. here. Now, you've been in Chicago since 1982, I think. Um, 92. Yes, yeah. 1992. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, 1992. <laughs> you've been at it since 1977, which means... Don't do the sums. I won't do it. I won't do it. Okay, you've been at it for a while and you still don't tire. In fact, let's have yes. a cup of tea because oh. you're looking tired. <laughs> uh, we're not going to use that. Oh. <laughs> let's have a cup of tea because Elizabeth looks tired. So your painting and music are very linked. Uh, at the moment, very linked. Yeah, I mean, I've been, sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, because you work on paintings and you were, yes, we'll start. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're so linked. It's we took a, a linky, crumpet linky, break linky. and now we don't know they're what we're linky. doing. One day, you know, I'm not going to, because I don't really wear makeup. One day, I'm not going to wear makeup. And I wonder if it would really make a difference on camera, Tim. I mean, he doesn't wear makeup. Yeah, okay. So I'm scratching this up, but if I want a bit more of a kind of excitement to go on, it's not quite going the way I want, yeah, I'll often yeah. just, you know, give it a bit of this. Oh, sorry. 